Well, this is game two of our four spring games on ACC Network on this uh, Saturday of Easter weekend, and we welcome you to Truist Field in Winston-Salem. Dave Clawson gets ready for season number nine, and his spring game, the black-white game, is here this afternoon. And great to be with Roddy Jones, West Durham, Lauren Sisler here in just a moment. Since he took the job almost nine years ago, Dave Clawson's talked about sustainability, Roddy, and after 11 wins last season and a division title, I think he's got it. Yeah, I think he does too. Dave Clawson's whole mantra for this program has been get old and stay old. COVID certainly helped with that. They've got a ton of experience coming back, especially on the offensive side of the football. And a really experienced offensive line and two of the best players in the league. Maybe the best quarterback receiver duo in the entire league. Sam Hartman and A.T. Perry. You look at what Sam Hartman's done back for his fifth season. The passing touchdowns also had 11 rushing touchdowns on the season. And A.T. Perry really burst on the scene after the injury to Donovan Green in camp last year. And he had one of the best seasons that a Wake Forest receiver's had in a long time. 15 receiving touchdowns, over 1,000 yards. He was absolutely fantastic a year ago. So a lot of firepower remains and returns for Dave Clawson and Wake Forest. Lawrence Sisler with us today on the sidelines. All right, Coach, we'll start big picture first and foremost coming off an 11 win season. How do you hope to carry some of that success here into the 2022 season? Well, we have 20 starters back when you include Donovan Green, Javionte Nash. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of guys here that understand what it takes. Every year is a new year, the personalities, the work ethic. Uh, this team has to form its own identity, but we have a lot of guys that I think know what it takes. You guys are out here in front of your crowd for a spring football game. How important is the development period here in the spring for you guys? Well, we're a developmental program, and uh, a, a lot of the you know people that fans are familiar with kind of know what they are. In, in the spring, you really look for, okay, who's the next generation? Who's going to be the third receiver? Who's going to be the third offensive tackle, the fourth interior lineman, the third DT? And those group, that, that group then becomes the next generation of starters. And that's, I think, the most important part of spring for us. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Good luck out there. Okay, thanks. Well, you get a look at Matthew Dennis, who hopes to be maybe the guy to replace Nick Skiba. They do kick it away. Deacons will run it out of there. And they do so with Keyshawn Williams. And so we get a live special teams rep to start. And here is Sam Hartman who will be quarterbacking the white team here today. And Roddy, in a league that's going to be terrific again at quarterback, this is one of the best in the ACC. He's one of the headliners, and he's a name that a lot of fans have seen for multiple years. Fifth-year guy deciding to come back. And he is the architect. He is the engine that makes this Wake Forest offense go. You got Justice Ellison with him in the backfield. And this will be Ellison. And these... The way this format works here, the white team is comprised primarily of the uh, first and third offensive units and the second defensive units. And then the black team obviously is second offense with first and third defense. So you're getting a pretty strong look here at ones and ones. And there's a throw and the catch is made by Taylor Morin. And that'll be a first down across the 35. And here's kind of a look at the way the squads were built and how the game is going to proceed. Defense number 44. Penalty is declined. And there's a Riley Johnson announcement. The referee is assigned by the ACC. But this is a thud, no tackle. I'm going to ask the former uh, running back here, how does that thud, no tackle work here? Uh, so thud is basically wrap a guy up, do not tackle to the ground. Now, some of those defensive players will tell you, they'll, they'll tap you on the butt and say, that was a thud, that's not a tackle. We'll, we'll, we'll adjudicate those today, too. There's a long throw to the near sideline and incomplete, trying to get to Jamal Banks. There is a little bit of competition involved at wide receiver here. Donovan Green still returning from an ACL tear in July of last year, Roddy. And the scenario is Jamal Banks, and there's A.T. Perry, that's the premier outside guy and now the the battle is on for those reps that go outside with Donovan Green's hopeful return when camp begins in August. Yeah. Here is Hartman on the second and ten and there is A.T. Perry and the defense 
sneaks in there, and that's Kalen Carson, the sophomore who touches him. So we've already seen A.T. Perry involved. We've seen Taylor Morin involved. And the shifting that's gone on at the receivers, Taylor Morin played outside receiver for this team last year, but with the exit of Jaquari Roberson, who was the slot guy, Morin's going to go back to the slot. He and Keyshawn Williams will handle that. So the question is, who's going to be that other outside receiver? Donovan Green, in a perfect world, comes back healthy. He was fantastic when he was healthy. He comes back there, but you need a couple others. You need a couple of other guys to fit in on the outside, and that's going to be the big question that we're looking for today. Jamal Banks is a guy that they talked a lot about. Horatio Fields and some of these other guys are going to be looking to fill those spots. Ivan Mora, the Deacons punter, was injured in the bowl game. He's not playing today, so we're going to get a look at uh, Zach Murphy. Who will punt the ball fifth year senior from Raleigh who played at Ravenscroft and Jackson Hensley is a youngster that uh, Wayne Lineberg who handles the uh, special teams is also taking a look at in the return game and here is Hensley and they will whistle him to the 17 maybe the 18 yard line that's a 50 yard punt by Murphy. Now the, the scenario for Wake Forest has been and Roddy we talked about this yesterday in our visit with Coach Clawson and offensive coordinator Warren Ruggiero. They stayed relatively healthy at quarterback last year. Yeah. Now the backup to Sam Hartman comes down to nation of Michael Kern and Mitch Griffiths and just a, a combination of guys here that are going to be involved. We're going to get a look at Mitch Griffiths here to start. Is a, a redshirt freshman from Ashburn, Virginia, and he'll have Quentin Cooley with him in the backfield. Yeah, There's a real battle for that number two quarterback spot and that number three running back spot that Quentin Cooley is a part of. Yep. There is Cooley. He's a sophomore from Southern Nash High School in Bailey, North Carolina, and he got caught up in the play with Bernard Good. 92 is a guy who they're pretty excited about in that defensive front. He's a redshirt freshman from Montgomery who did not play at all last year but at 6 1 and 281. No question that new defensive coordinator Brad Lambert likes his ability. And that time it was uh, firing inside was Kevin Pointer another young guy who's a transfer from Louisiana Monroe to this Wake Forest program. They are really excited about this defense this defensive line especially Dave Clawson said it's his best defensive line he's had. They've got nine, ten playable guys on that defensive front. Quick throw to the perimeter and throw behind the intended receiver. And that was Horatio Fields. And there's a marker on the play on a ball intended for the redshirt freshman Fields. Pass interference. Defense number nine. That is an automatic first down. And that is uh, Jalen Garnes. Who is ticketed for the pass interference? Talking to new defensive coordinator Brad Lambert yesterday, it, he was just like, "Look, our corners and our defensive backs get tested every single day in practice because of the size and length of these receivers." Ratio field 6'3", 195 pounds. There's a give to Cooley, and he'll pick up a yard or so. Jalen Hudson. Trying to battle at one of the linebacking spots. Cooley's an interesting player. Got 45 carries a year ago. Bigger back, 215 pounds. 54 touchdowns as a senior in North Carolina. There's a throw inside intended for Jackson Hensley. And we talked about sustainability at the top. And that's where this focus is today. You heard Coach Clawson with Lauren roll through the number of returnees. But with us yesterday he started breaking down kind of the the tears if you will Roddy of how success is continued and it's developing guys and he uses the term developmental program and you think 11 wins well they got it in place but he said it's constant it's, you never stop thinking about your roster and the, and the management of it. I guess. Yeah and the thing that we focus on in the offseason how many starters do they have coming back how many names do we recognize. But the thing that coaches focus on is how deep is this team? How far can I go down my depth chart before you really fall off a cliff in terms of production and how comfortable you feel? And that's the thing that you develop in the spring. That's why the reps that we just saw with the black offense and the white defense are so important because there are depth battles being had yep. in those uh, reps. 
Matthew Dennis handles the punt and a pretty good one by the way Keyshawn Williams will signal for the fair catch and let's check in with Lauren 46 yard punt by Dennis yeah, Wes, going into that conversation you had with Coach yesterday, you asked him about sustainability, and he said, as a coach, you never really feel like you're there, right? And you never truly get there. There will always be problems that he gravitates towards, and right now the focus falls on the depth and some of those key positions you guys talked about, especially on the defensive side of the football. And with the new defensive coaching staff, the reps just aren't there on that side of the football yet. So he says there's really a learning curve, but he certainly likes the pieces in place in the direction they're heading. Well, uh, to the point there. You ought to like some of these guys. I mean, because, Roddy, you got a lot of guys with a lot of experience in the offensive line now. I mean, Devontae Gordon is a guy that ended up playing a lot of football last year. Remember, Javionte Nash is the one that it kind of got the bulk of the run last year, right? Or he got hurt, didn't play. Devontae Gordon was the beneficiary of that, right? Yeah, he was. And, and you lose Zach Tom, who was the headliner of that offensive line crew. But, but the projected offensive line, but you've got J.B. Ante Nash, who's a seventh-year senior. Yeah. You've got Loic and Gossam Naya, who's a fifth-year senior. You've got Sean McGinn, who's a fifth-year senior. Michael Jurgens, who's a redshirt junior, fourth-year player. And then Devontae Gordon's the young buck, yeah. redshirt sophomore. So this offensive line is going to be incredibly, incredibly experienced, and we're not going to see all those guys today. But developmental program, not only are those guys older, but the guys behind them are older and more developed, too. Yeah, Jurgens not playing today. There's a throw, and it's incomplete for Banks. And you see some of those guys contending in the front here. And a look at Gordon on that left side. It's funny, you know, Coach Clawson was telling us, yes, it's a new defensive staff, so they haven't seen those calls. They haven't seen those blitzes that they're seeing in practice, and the offensive line just picks them up like it's nothing because there's so much experience there. There's a throw for Banks, and good play defensively by Gavin Holmes. Tell you what, Brad Lambert's secondary. Ronnie has, uh, has kind of responded to the challenge here against Perry and Banks, in particular, on the perimeter. Yeah, the, the second, they are really excited about their two starting corners, Gavin Holmes, and uh, you look at Gavin Holmes and then, excuse me, Colby Davis, who have done an excellent job there on the outsides. Excuse me, Kalen Carson, the other starting corner. My apologies. Yeah. But those two guys have been so good for them on the outside. You saw Holmes there. Both of them played a lot last year. And when you're tested this much in practice, those, those corners are not shying away from the length and size of receiver. Nick Regano deep to take the punt of Murphy. He kind of flipped that one over, and it only went 37 yards. And Kevin Higgins trying to get his wide receivers lined up, ready to go here. Sam Hartman just two for six. Curry is ready for us whenever we uh, want him, so you just let me know if you want to try to get him in this quarter or wait till the second quarter. We're going to get a look at Michael Kern here. We expect Griffiths and Kern to rotate quite a bit here, Roddy, with this second unit today. Okay, yeah, I'll and, go ahead and tell again, him to it's, it's a battle. It's a battle between those two guys, so I would expect the reps to be fairly even. And you saw in that first series, Griffiths had some good, some bad, some passes off offline a little bit, so. I mean, every single rep is going to be graded by these coaches. All right, Will Towns is in the backfield. That means he switched teams here. He's wearing the yellow penny, if you will. Kobe Davis, the play on the perimeter for the white defense. So basically what happens with young Towns, redshirt freshman from Jackson, New Jersey, is he is a member technically of the white team, but in this particular situation, they can option him to the black in a uh, late night transaction. What do you think they gave up for? I'm not sure. I don't think anything, actually. Uh, boy, tough throw and a great catch by Fields, Roddy. Coming here to the near sideline. It's a, it's a tough grab and a big-time throw. It's a big-time throw right on the sideline, and then watch the hands catch. Defensive back right on his back, and Fields, as this ball is going out of bounds, just snatches it out of the air. I'll tell you what, this group is behind the, the, the ones that you know. They're impressive looking for sure. Towns gets stu stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Jalen Hudson. And Dunkster Towns had offers from Boston College, Pittsburgh, and West Virginia coming out of Memorial High School in New Jersey. So here is second down, and Kern going to keep this. And he will step through and pick up the first down. Heady play by the uh, Richard sophomore Kern before Christian Masterson makes the play out of the secondary. 
And yes, another Masterson has found his way to Winston-Salem. That was a, a really smart play by Michael Curran. He was trying to go out wide to Horatio Fields. It was covered by Deshaun Jones. So he just takes off, sees a little gap. He saw the burst there that he's got as well. And here's a throw and looking across the middle. Regano bobbled it and couldn't hang on. So second down and 10 coming up. Ronnie, how much do you think? I mean, we talked to Warren Ruggiero, who's the quarterback's coach and OC. Dave Clawson obviously has a lot of the offense on his plate, even nine years in here in Winston-Salem. The backup to Hartman is something that's it's got to be pretty convincing, right? I mean, do you want to go with two backups, two guys that are on parallels? Do you want to have one clear here? No, I think you want to have one clear because let's be honest, the, the history of Dave Clawson's time at Wake Forest has been one majority of the time having to play two quarterbacks. Right. I mean, you, you think about Sam Hartman's freshman year where he gets hurt, Jamie Newman comes in, but even going back to John Walford's time, yep. I mean, that was a time where Kendall Hinton had to step in a number of uh, a number of seasons. There'll be so, a sack coming out of this, and it's Kevin Pointer. Loss of eight on the play. He's another guy that they could not stop oh, yeah. talking about. Brad Lambert just said, look, this dude is on an upward trajectory. When you talk about Kevin Porter, transfer from ULM. Yep. Yeah, Lambert was very excited about kind of the culture that had been developed with their defensive players, especially those up front. Here's a 49-yarder, and this is Zach Murphy to try and put the white team on the board. And it is good. So, field goal to 49 yards does it. And we got points in Winston-Salem back after this. The AD of the year, John Curry, standing by with me. Wake Forest is building some special things here. Your attendance is up across the board, across different sports, obviously football, basketball. We've got a crowd here in the stadium today for spring ball. What do you attribute that success and that growth to? Well, we're really lucky here, Lauren. We've had incredible leadership at Wake Forest uh, really over the last half a century. You look at our president now, Dr. Susan Winty, who's been here for about 10 months, but you wouldn't know it because she's moved so fast and with such great conviction, uh, her following President Hatch. Uh, Ron Wellman was our athletic director for 27 years, and Dr. Gene Hooks was AD for 28 years uh, before Ron. And so that kind of leadership over time, hiring great coaches like Dave Clawson, as Ron did, and others is what enables Wake Forest to continue to move forward. And you talk about Coach Clawson, you just gave him a long-term extension. Where is the confidence in your head football coach to keep moving this program forward? Well, again, I would say uh, Coach Clawson earned that extension uh, the way he has built, rebuilt our football program to be a program that now has won, I think, the third most games of any team in the league over the last five years. Uh, been in six consecutive bowl games, which is, of course, uh, the second longest streak in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and, you know, compete and win a championship uh, last year winning the Atlantic uh, Division. But it really goes back to a commitment from our Board of Trustees, uh, Matt King, our chairman, our president, Dr. Susan Winty, all of whom recognize the unique characteristics and values of Dave Clawson and how those mesh so well with Wake Forest. There's a lot of little conversations that go on that oftentimes Wake Forest is maybe the little engine that could. What do you want to say to those folks? Well, you know, I don't mind when my good friend uh, Mark Packer refers to Wake Forest as Switzerland, right? Because Switzerland is a pretty sophisticated operation, just like Wake Forest. But that little engine that could moniker is really old. You know, the little engine, of, that could, the little, little engine that could doesn't have among the very best athletic facilities in the country. If you look at what we've done in the football facilities, by the time we get to December, we'll have completed $100 million and we'll truly have, and I can say this, I've been part of about th almost three quarters of a billion dollars of facility construction at my three institutions in my career. We'll have among the best on-campus facilities in the country, not just in the ACC when that's completed. This is a jet engine at Wake Forest, not a little engine that could. And what we're doing is we're starting to see that flywheel of that jet engine spin faster and faster with each season. And I want to talk about those facilities. You've invested over $100 million in the last seven years. Of course, with the football facilities, 60,000 square feet, you guys are putting that together. Give us sort of the timeline on that and how critical that is for obviously recruiting and bringing guys in and giving them the support, the, 
the program the support that they need to be successful. Well, when people who visit Wake Forest, they already know they're going to have access to a world-class faculty and a top 30 university nationally. Uh, but sometimes because of maybe some of those myths and maybe, you know, that the, they haven't heard about Wake Forest the most uh, when it comes to football or basketball or baseball, or whatever, uh, they don't really know how, how committed we are to offering student athletes the very best opportunities, both academically and athletically. So when they go into Farrell Hall, which is our state-of-the-art business center, they see it, and now when they come into the McCrary Complex or the Shaw Basketball Complex or the Diane Daly Learning Complex for golf, they see that it, that commitment is at the highest level, both academically and athletically. All right, that's John Curry. Guys, I'm going to send it back to you up. He's got the jet engine going, folks. Love it. No question. And uh, he's got a football team that's got a lot of prospects in 2022. And, and I just want to echo his sentiment about the facilities. We have had a chance to tour the, the McCreary football complex. Yeah. It is phenomenal. And it's being expanded. And it's, and it, as you said, it's being expanded. Yeah. I mean, from meeting room to to the all the amenities that you expect obviously an indoor facility weight room all of it it is beautiful and they have done an excellent job over there so the investment certainly is uh, is there well in your situation now you get Quentin Cooley's best run of this young scrimmage Mitch Griffiths by the way coming out of there as the quarterback 12 yard run for Cooley watch the left side of this line get collapsed down you see a seal on the outside by Trey Bowl the tight end and Cooley had the easy job. Just yep. find the grass. So we're going to look at Mitch Griffiths after Michael Kern led them to the field goal. Here's Griffiths and a quick shot inside for Fields. Horatio Fields with his second good catch, Roddy, here in this uh, opening period. Or early in this game, I'd say he's been the most consistent of the Wake receivers. You know, we've seen Jamal Banks get a couple of opportunities. We've seen some opportunities elsewhere that weren't taken advantage of. But Horatio Fields has found space yep. and secured the ball. They'll cut this one loose on the back side and intercepted. There's a flag down. Picked off in the secondary by J.J. Roberts. And it's going to be a marker, I think, against Roberts for pass Ooh, interference here. Looks like you're right, J.J. Roberts. Defense number 25, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Former West Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year. And one of those guys that's battling for that third corner spot. I, I don't know. I actually, um, I, think that's a, I don't know if that's a pass interference. Yeah? They kind of run into each other. Uh, I don't know. I think you let that go in the spring, Wes. Spring. Oh, you know what? Spring, spring for those guys too, Roddy. You know, not even that. <laughs> it's too early. It's too early in the season. I am not going to get on the referees this year. Oh, is new, that some new, new, new wrinkle you've gotten? New you, new me. New you. Okay. We're not, going on, we're not. We're not talking about referees. Okay. Until the uh, until. Also in the spring, it's all good. Yeah, in the spring, we're fine. We're fine. We're, we're spring, talking spring, about umpires in the spring. It's we spring for it's spring for them too, right? We get after umpires in the spring. We it's, leave referees alone. Okay, Raleigh Johnson's our referee. He's got a good crew with him here today, right? They good. Yeah, they're, they're doing fine. It's soft. It's just all soft. Little nickel dimer on JJ Roberts. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Second down. And Cooley trying to find something again, poking his head in there. A.J. Williams is the sophomore defensive back from Bamberg, South Carolina. He had nine tackles against Virginia two years ago, but. <laughs> Dwayne Gooden. Huh? The, the, the green jersey only applies when he has the ball in his hands. You can hit him when he has the ball out of his hands. I said Dwayne Bernard Gooden. Here's the roll to the near side and thrown out of bounds by Mitch Griffiths. And Bernard Gooden that time was forcing him out. We end the quarter. 3 0. Worship Field in Blacksburg. And then we'll finish up at the Horseshoe on the West Campus in Durham. Mike Elko's first edition of the Duke Blue Devils. That will be an interesting situation. He's got Jordan Moore and Riley Leonard. 
battling at the QB spot there, Roddy. You look, you look at the three games, the four games we had today. Three of them, new head coaches. You right. had Mario Cristobal of Miami before us. You got Brent Pry in Virginia Tech yep. with Jason Brown, the South Carolina transfer, and Grant Wells, the Marshall transfer, battling it out at quarterback. And then Mike Elko's group at the end, which you said, all of those games are fascinating. So yep. if you didn't catch Miami's, go back and watch it. Virginia Tech and Duke after us certainly must see TV. Well, I think Miami's got quarterback situation. Ironed They've got out. that figured out. Yeah, yes. they got it ironed out here in Winston Salem. Yep. Now you mentioned the four new head coaches. You and I will be in Charlottesville next Saturday for Tony Elliott yep. and the Virginia Cavaliers. There's a throw inside for Fields. Pretty good collision there with the safety Roberts or the corner Roberts. Style this back up inside here. We're going to look at Matt Goldman, who they like in the offensive line, too. I'm going to get big. And a couple of defensive linemen away. Matt Goldman, redshirt freshman. There's a couple offensive linemen on the white team on that first group that are not that we're not going to see today. Uh huh. So it moves everybody up a little bit, but Goldman doing a nice job there. I'll tell you what, Matt Goldman is one of two guys that they talked about. Spencer Clapp, who we've seen, Luke Pettibone, and then. That ball got knocked away. Another ball intended for Fields, and that time the play was Kobe Davis. The Lauren and I last night, Roddy, ran into George Sell's mom and dad from outside of Cleveland at Chagrin Falls, Ohio. And Lauren met Mr. Sell, who was a former basketball player at St. Joe's. Lauren, would you confirm that George Sell's dad is big? Uh, yes, quite. <laughs> Quite a tall Six, man. Six nine, Roddy. Literally, I, literally, we're walking through the hallway of the hotel, and I, I swear to you, the tip <laughs> of his hat, the little, the little ball on the top of his hat, was definitely brushing the ceiling, 100 percent. And they said he's six foot nine. I mean, he, he's a big dude. So it's in the genes and his sister. Yeah. Um, she's she's playing volleyball, right? Yeah, uh, headed so to Youngstown State. Going to Youngstown State yeah. and uh, excited about that. She wants to pursue broadcasting. So maybe we'll link up at some point. But she she also was very tall. Yeah. Looked like a volleyball player. So uh, yeah, it's definitely in the family. The genes are good there. George Sell, by the way, is a redshirt freshman, 6'4", 286. <laughs> And he's trailing the break at the house, Roddy. Right? He might have some growing to do still. And he was a guy that played for him last yeah. year. Got hurt during the during uh, the middle of the season after a few games. Uh, but he's a guy that's going to be in the mix yep. on that offensive line. Is that where you notice the sustainability more, baby? And we talk about defensive line, and that's a power area too. Yeah. But the offensive line, you lose Zach Tom, who, by the way, is probably going what? Maybe first two days of the draft. Yeah, I'd, I'd say probably day two, day three. Yeah. Here's Sam Hartman bailing for the white team. There is a flag down behind the play. Hartman will turn the corner and pick up about six and probably a hold. Riley Johnson to tell us about it. Holding. Offense number 52. 10 yard penalty. First down. And the holding call is on Spencer. Senior from the triad area. There's Spencer. And the, you, you mentioned it. he's a guy that they're really excited for. Will likely be in a backup role, but another fifth-year guy who's going to get a lot of playing time. But yeah, I, Wes, I, I think yeah, absolutely. That's where you've seen the the benefits the most for Wake Forest with these extra years. It's on the offensive line. It's having multiple fifth-year and then the seventh-year senior in Javionte Nash yeah. on that offensive line. But that means your backups are Richard sophomores. Kalen Carson almost came up with a big time pick. <laughs> sure did. He had that one dead to rights. Sure did. Here's the look at the super seniors on offense and Clap McGinn, Nash, Naya, all playing. You throw in that with the COVID year, and next thing you know, you got guys that are ready to roll with a lot of experience. There's a Torian Perry with another catch, and that'll leave a third short. It's a 17 yard throw. Out to the 36. Sam Hartman's team trailing three nothing. With under eight to go. That time it's Whitehart the tight end. Blake Whitehart who had 15 catches for three scores a year ago. Including the uh, clincher in Charlottesville against Virginia. Just voted a captain or announced as a captain this morning. Voted a captain last night. Here's Hartman firing back across. That's Morin making another grab. 
Sam Hartman doing a nice job of going from his right back to his left. Morin was not the first read, A.T. Perry was, but Taylor Morin, I think, is going to have a big year in the slot for him. Number one, because the slots at Wake Forest have big years. It's just what this offense does. But number two, he's so experienced, and I'm not sure there's any guy his size at 5'10", 176 pounds is what he's listed, that competes more with the ball in the air than Taylor Moore. And just love the way he plays and competes for the football. Here's Hartman stepping up and looking downfield. Banks was, I think, the intended receiver. Hartman was fighting through some traffic, though. Wayman may have gotten a hand on it. This defensive line has made things a little difficult for Wake Forest on offense on really both sides. And I think it goes to show you how good this defensive line is. You're doing some mixing and matching on the old line, which obviously leads to some uh, it can lead to some continuity issues and, and some some communication issues overall. But I think this defensive line has done a nice job of collapsing the pocket on Sam Hartman, particularly when the white team's out there. So we get the Dave Clawson punt in effect if you will so that'll bring us to opportunity to tell you about Thursday night ACC lacrosse doubleheader coming up on ACC network and the ESPN app we'll start on the men's side with number 15 North Carolina and South Bend to see number 10 Notre Dame at six and then we'll take you into the top 10 on the ladies side the nation's number one team Jenny Levy in North Carolina welcome Duke from over eight miles away that comes up at eight o'clock all Thursday night on ACC network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Anything you want to add? Is there anything I want to add? <laughs> Chris Gray on North Carolina. It's must be. Look, but here's the thing, though, Wes. Notre Dame, every game is huge for them. Yeah. RPI-wise, not the highest RPI. You know, there's some teams in front of them that maybe have played weaker schedules now, Wes. Right. But Notre Dame, it's big for them every week here on out to get in the tournament. Obviously, the ACC not going with the ACC tournament this year, so yeah. that regular season, huge. Second year in a row, Will Towns burst through, by the way, as Michael Kern has come back in to quarterback the black team. Yeah, yeah the women are going to have the cross tournament. The men will not for a second year. Yeah. Right? They will not. Apparently, the coaches opted not to. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, the league not going to get as many teams. The Ivy coming back, certainly. Oh, what a great catch that is. Jackson Hensley snatches it out of the air. It's a big time play right here in front of Deshaun Jones at corner. Deshaun Jones, a good young player that they're excited about, but Jackson Hensley just snatches this out of the air. Mm. Takes Almost takes it away from Jones. He might have had a shot at that had it gone through the hands. So first and 10 at the 32. Black squad with a 3-0 lead. And around the corner goes Kern. And Michael Kern will pick up a first down on his own again. Roddy, twice we've seen Kern use his feet to advance. And that's a, it's always been a part of this Wake Forest offense, the quarterback using his feet and running. He's got the option to throw this as he gets out on the edge, but sees the lane and continues to go. And I mean, Sam Hartman was a big time rushing threat, especially as you got down towards the red zone. 11 rushing touchdowns a year ago. So that's going to be something they look for from their backup as well. Got measured for nine in this uh, no tackle thud approach in this first half. And looked like Towns was able to squeeze through before Quincy Bryant touched him up. Are you excited about the second half where we play tackle football? Or yeah, Dave Clawson emphasized in the second half we will be playing all tackle football. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to kind of see how the physicality with that unit work, these units work. We're going to see a lot of the back end of the roster yeah. in the second half. There's another quick throw, big time grab. Regano hauls it in. I think the thing that you don't get with thud, that you do get when you go full tackle, is how strong from a balance standpoint are you? Right. How can you fight through the arm tackles? Because you're blown dead right away in thud. That's what I'm interested in in some of these guys lower on the depth chart. I know what A.T. Perry can do after he catches the football, but I want to see what some of these other guys can do. Yep, and there's Horatio Fields. Like that guy. Yeah. Four you know what? The other thing, too, and this is what you respect about the way David Clawson is building his program. We'll get another look. Third nice catch Fields has made here in the first half, by the way. Roddy, here's the other thing. Quick, yeah. roster management. 
Fields played four games last year, preserves the red shirt. Right. That's it. I mean, how many times do you look down a Wake Forest roster and see four games played? Yep. They know exactly where they are in the big picture, too. It, it's part of it's part of the DNA of this Wake Forest program, making sure that you do red shirt guys. Dave Clawson told Lauren at the beginning, they're a developmental program. A lot of places say that. Wake Forest truly is that. Ball start. You... Offense. Number 76. Five-yard penalty. First out. It's look, Jaden Collins, by the way. If you look at the, the recruiting rankings, the Cruton rankings, you got to scroll down a little bit in the ACC before you get to Wake Forest. But if you look at the wins and the guys that are producing at the in the, in the ACC, right. you don't have to scroll down very far to find a top receiver from Wake Forest, a top pass from Wake Forest. I mean, this is a, a team that does a great job of growing their guys up. And another false start, I think. Snap infraction. Wow. Offense, five yard penalty, first down. So a snap infraction. And you see Dave Clawson, who talks to Riley Johnson to make sure he's got the details on that. <laughs> Wake, who was 11th a year ago at nearly 468 yards a game offensively. They were 12th throwing the football nationally, 4th in scoring at 41 points a game. And there's Towns. We've seen a lot of Will Towns in this first half from a run perspective. Jalen Hudson pushed him to the ground. It's really good patience by Will Towns, which is what's required from these Wake Forest running backs. Christian Beal Smith, who had been a stalwart for him the past couple of seasons, transfers out, goes to South Carolina. Look at Fields. What a great catch by Horatio Fields. I can see why Dave Clawson was excited about this young guy, Roddy. It's a heck of a catch against J.J. Roberts. Yeah, I mean, Michael Curran just throws it to the back head of J.J. Roberts, and Horatio Fields snatches Give me that off your head. <laughs> Coming down with it. Wow. That's fantastic. That is two great catches and two really above average grabs Absolutely. for Fields. Four catches, 52 yards, and then tack up a touchdown for Regano. Michael Kern, very impressive on the possession for the Black Squad to push into a 9 nothing lead. Most experienced of these backups, Michael Kern. He has been impressive, running the football, making some really nice throws. I and mean, he had the one on the run in the first quarter, had the one right there on top of the defender's head. And then and that was the easiest one he's probably made all day, pitch and catch down the field into the, into the end zone for a touchdown. 27-yard throw to Regano, and all of a sudden it's a 9-0 lead. Matthew Dennis, the freshman from Myers Park in Charlotte, pushes through the extra point, and we get a timeout. Two and a half to go. Kern, seven for nine, 85 yards. And this 27-yarder for the Deacon all the way to break down the four games. I think those boys work on Monday, too, right? They are working on Monday. That comes your way on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. We're getting our first look at Billy Edwards quarterbacking the uh, white team here. And where we are in the half, and we were not expecting to see many of the starters in the second half. We may have seen the last of Sam Hartman. To yeah, be honest with you. may have. Zach Igwebe, a redshirt freshman from Clarksville, Maryland, has come in the ball game. He's wearing number 42. There's a look at Billy Edwards Jr., top 50 recruit from uh, Lake Braddock High School in Burke, Virginia. That's Andy Elkins on the back Passes end of that throw. Number 88, Andy Elkins Jr. So, so a short compact delivery ball jumped out of Billy Edwards' hand though, right there. Yep. Delivery out to the boundary. Did not play a year ago. Had 5,000 yards of passing and 59 touchdowns, despite no senior year because of COVID in Virginia. Did Billy Edwards? How about that? Pretty good run in high school. You throw for 59 scores and you don't get to play your senior year. That's pretty good. Jarrett Brown, the catch there. Edwards is coming here and shooting it down the field, Roddy. He is. So that patented ride and read, executing it well for a guy who's young in his career, delivering over the middle. That is off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Gavin Ellis, the tight end. Elijah Hall was uh, 
the tight end or the defensive lineman pressuring. It was a pretty good delivery though off platform kind of falling back away from the defender slinging it out there gave his receiver a chance and Dave Clawson trying to get this is what happens in these spring games every once in a while a correction Let's get some coaching points <laughs> and this is Igwebe with the ball carry Balbus the linebacker Making the stop. Billy Edwards is 6'3. 6'3, 216 pounds. And now in the final 70 seconds. Play a little four minute offense. Yeah, we right get now. a little clock management. It's third downs. So they're running it down a little bit, trying yep. to play it like a real situation. Here is uh, Edwards taking the long shot, and it is caught. What a catch. Des Williams hauls that down against traffic, too, Ronnie. Another one of those receivers that are competing for that outside spot. Des Williams, a young guy, goes up, snags it over Anthony Boriello. Yep. These Wake Forest receivers are always asked to compete with the ball in the air. You got to win jump balls if you want to play here. 42 yard throw and another quick shot. That is a touchdown. Williams goes into the end zone, and Des Williams makes back to back catches to put the white squad on the board here. Another staple. An RPO to Ryan Reed. Well, glance around behind the linebackers. Delivery to Des Williams. Shows the strong hands. Nice job for the white squad. How about Billy Edwards coming in slinging? Yeah, he was. He went 42 yards and then just pushes it right across the middle. He's four for six, 70 yards on the touchdown drive. Matthew Dennis punches home the point. The extra point is Let's go back here and look at Des Williams with two nice catches. This one in the end zone. Oh, when you're a receiver, you just have to admit you've got this round. The key is beating your man in the inside. As a defensive back, you don't want him to cross your face and get that leverage. But as Williams is a nice stem off the off the line. Yellow, and all he's got to do is secure the catch, which he does as well. Yep. So Dave Clawson got what he wanted out of that situation. Yeah, well, and, and the reason that they slowed it down on the third and eight is if you're playing this like a real situation, you obviously want the chance to get the first down, but you don't want to leave too much time on the clock. So they played it right, and Edwards gets him in the end zone. Who yeah. knows how we're doing timeouts today to be honest. Yeah, that's, I don't know. That's another good point. We could have three timeouts. We could have no timeouts. That's it, right? And the black's going to end up with the last possession with Mitch Griffiths coming in. There's the offense we're talking about with Wake Forest, fourth in the country in scoring at 41 points a game, 11th. When you look at total yardage, and of course, 307 yards had him in 12th. The other thing you ought to know is they were number one in the ACC and sixth nationally in third down conversion rate as right. well. And, and one of the best in the country and the best in the ACC and converting in the red zone as well. Yeah. I mean, some of that was Nick Skiba. Yeah. Excellent kicker that they had as well. But they were fantastic. Not only converting on third downs, but in the red zone. And that'll be the uh, final play here of the half, it looks like. So one snap for Griffiths, and uh, that'll take care of that. So halftime we reach. Here in this uh, spring game in Winston-Salem at Truist. For the first time Wake Forest has done this for at television. The, the first half, our score is 10 to 7. The second half of this year's spring game and in approximately 15 minutes. Thank you. Dave Lawson is making the long walk for a visit with Lauren in the end zone here. And as the CEO of this program, he's I'd be pretty pleased, I think, Rob. Right? Uh, the only the only people who probably aren't pleased if you had the uh, first half over <laughs> proficiency of this offense, you're yeah. probably a little upset. Yeah. No, and, and I'll see. 
Well, it's 10-7 in favor of the black team as we get ready to go second half here. And based on that, Dave Boston's going to let the uh, leaders in the clubhouse get the football first. We're going to have a look here. And remember now, this is going to be the full deal. This is, uh, we're now playing tackle football, as he told Lauren. So we're going to look at Zach Murphy set to kick it away. Young man from Ravenscroft and Raleigh. And Christian Green is the young man deep wearing 29 for the black squad. Is the kick and we'll see green from a yard deep he'll bring it out to the 15 20 and slip forward to about the 25 yard line and it looks like where they'll get going and it's going to be mitch griffiths who's going to get the call here for the black squad so here comes griffiths and he is going to have Quentin Cooley with him in the backfield. He was two for eight in the first half for 18 yards. Roddy is headed down to join Lauren, so be careful, Lauren, when Roddy gets down there. I, I am ready for Roddy to get down here. <laughs> Apparently, he's going to be sporting some new sunglasses. You know, Coach is wearing his sunglasses so he can he can fit in. But, yep. you know, I want to talk about this this program and coming off the momentum and success they had a season ago and talking to Clawson about it. Look, you can't get complacent. That's the big key here. You come off 11 wins. They know they can accomplish that here, but they also know it wasn't easy. Looking back at last season, there were many opportunities for the score to sway the other way. He talked about a lot of games coming down to the wire, the final minutes and the execution on the final play. And Coach Clawson says in those moments, they did the little things right, and that's what has to remain the point of emphasis as they ride this wave of success. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, a well-stated point he had yesterday. You saw Cooley get the carry on first down. And on second and short, they run it one more time with, with Quentin Cooley. He's got 33 yards now and nine carries. The thing that impresses you about Dave Clawson is the full awareness of where the program is, Lauren. That's the thing that I always come away with talking to him. I mean, we talked about roster management in the first half. You mentioned the close games yesterday. He's ready to report to you yesterday. Yeah, we won 11, but let me tell you about the 11, right? Make sure that these guys know that it's not going to be easy. And obviously, as they're developing this team, developing this program, and especially on the defensive side of the ball, that's the one thing he that talked about defensively. These guys just don't have way. those same kind of reps. And really, they want to kind of hone in on the defensive side of the football. And that's what he's charged new defensive coordinator Brad Lambert with and this coaching staff. And so I know they're really excited to see where that's coming. But as you said, Coach Clawson is really big on leadership. He's big on um, the analytics. He's big on attention to detail. And you know, I love just talking to him and sort of what goes into that mindset. And they talk about these book clubs and, yeah. and really spending time digging into those uh, facets of everything, the leadership, uh, you know, it's will matching with humility and allowing successful programs, successful companies to be successful and to leverage that and manage that for the long term. Matthew Dennis, the punt, finishes off the drive. And Keyshawn Williams. So when we come back, Billy Edwards gets the football again. White team. This time in control. Back after this. Alongside the head coach of the Deacons. Yes, sir. We're getting the, uh, the headset figured out here, but I'm here with Coach Clawson. Coach, take me through. So, what are you looking at here? Well, I'm just I'm watching the point of attack, and, and you're really trying to evaluate the quarterback of whether they're making the right decisions or not. And I'm really looking at the line play. You know, I think in a spring game, you want the line play to be firm. You don't want guys coming free off of edges, and you don't want a lot of push either. You know, if the line of scrimmage is firm, then probably both sides are doing what they should do. So that, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. As a coach, when the offense makes a great play, obviously something's happening on defense. How do you evaluate whether both sides are doing their job? Well, to me, you know, how big's the space? You know, if it's a tight space and a guy makes a guy miss, you know, then that's a heck of a play by him. Anytime there becomes big spaces, it's usually because of a missed assignment or a blown coverage. You know, it's not necessarily a great play by the offense, but it's a bust by the defense. And so more than anything, you're looking for clean football. 
you know, any time that a guy's open, he makes a contested catch, and he's tagged up right away, that's good football. Everybody did their job. One side executed a little better, and you're getting better. When guys are wide open and no one's near them, uh, you know, or two receivers are in the same place, you know there's been a bust. So I, I've been told I need to flip sides so that we can get you a little bit more and, and me a little bit less. <laughs> but w w when you're when you're looking at this team and you go thud in the first half, obviously you're getting some tackle football in the second half. W what's the difference in evaluation of thud Des than, than when you go full go? I, I mean, I, I think part of it is where we are. We've got 20 starters back and there's more to lose than gain by going live. But for some of these young guys that have not played, you know, in football games, they need these live reps. They need to play real football. And who breaks tackles? Who can get the ball on the ground? Uh, and yet, you only get 15 spring practices. So we can't afford just to give the ones a day off. These practices are too valuable. So the only way to get them work, try to keep them up and healthy, and give these younger guys game reps is to kind of design the spring game the way we did. Yeah. If I had a younger football team, we'd do it differently. We'd probably play live today. Well, I'm excited to get some tackle football in the second half. You talked to us about a couple of positions where you're looking for the competition. One of them was receiver, and Horatio Fields came out and had a great first half. What did you see from him today? What we've seen all camp is that he's made contested catches, uh, that you know he has really good ball skills. He has a little bit of what you see with the Torian Perry, the ability to pe make people miss after the catch, and yet he's still young. Um, you know, there's still times that he doesn't read the coverage correctly or you know his break on a certain route isn't consistent so the quarterback will throw it in front of him or throw it behind him and it's real important that those guys between now and the summer you know that we fix th those mistakes and those weaknesses and that's what we'll do next week we'll meet with every single player on the team and evaluate their spring one of the things that's often talked about with your offense is the ride read that you guys do but what's not often talked about is the quick decisions that have to happen after. How much is on your quarterback's plate in terms of post-snap decision-making? Well, you, you played in a triple option offense, right? And so the quarterback in a triple option offense in the double slot, you know, has that whole ride and decide period that he's got to read the down guy for the dive. He's got to read, you know, the second guy, whether he's going to keep it or pitch it, right? And those things happen all within 1.2 seconds. Not much different the way we start a play. You know, as we, we ride that zone play, you know, that's the ride and decide portion that he's making a quick decision of, am I going to give the back the ball or am I going to keep it? And then while he's processing that, he's got to figure out if he does pull it, where on the perimeter is the ball going to go? So there's a lot of quick decisions he's got to make. And, and when he's throwing the ball after he comes off that read, I mean, often he's only a couple of yards behind the line. The experience that you have on the offensive line, especially up the middle, how big is that for, for you with an offense that ha does have the quarterback so close to the line of scrimmage? Well, the, the, the catch-22 of it is because everything starts out as a run. You know, that there's not a we, – we, we neutralize a pass rush a little bit by doing that. You know, the whole run-pass transition that defensive lineman has to make. But at the same time, when you're big, experienced, and firm up front, you know, it, it lets you ride that thing a little bit deeper, and it allows routes to develop, and it gives the quarterback a little bit more time to make that decision. Well, Coach, I, I appreciate it. If you got any extra carries, being down here on the field, I think I can take one don't for you. Let's right go. All right. No, no, let's it, don't Coach. push Thank it. You, let's don't push it, okay? I got an idea. Let's don't push it. How's that? Uh, great visit with Dave Clawson. 12 plays into the drive. Igwebe going to get the ball carry here on first and 10. And Roddy, had great questions and really clarity from Dave Clawson about what a Billy Edwards or Michael Kern or Mitch Griffiths has gone through here in learning this offensive system to perfect it the way that uh, that certainly Sam Hartman has. It, it, it certainly is. I mean, there's so much. I think a triple option is like the perfect analogy to it because there's so much they have to do, multiple guys they're looking at and reading. And so I appreciate Coach Clawson for, for giving us the opportunity to ask that question while those guys are going through it because Sam Hartman has mastered it. He makes it look easy, but it is certainly not, Wes. That stuff happens really quickly. Yep. And here is uh, Billy Edwards taking this group 
By the way, remember he had the touchdown drive with the white team. And he is uh, on the verge of knocking another one in here. Edwards throws and the catch is made. That's the tight end. Gavin Ellis, redshirt freshman from down in Hampstead, North Carolina, Topsail Island. Rolling into the uh, first and goal situation now. And, and you know, Wes, the, the accuracy part of the Wake Forest quarterback is big. You're going to take shots downfield, but they make so many quick decisions where they deliver the ball short that that's been impressive to me from all these guys, with Billy Edwards in particular. Yep. Igwebe trying to fight through, and did he crack? No. He'll be just short of the goal line. This is one that I could take. I could take this carry, Wes. <laughs> I, may, I may go lobby for it. I'm standing next to Sam Hartman. He's walking towards the line. I may go to. Come on, Sam. Let's go get in this thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's happening either. And Igwebe pushes it in. I think he crossed the line there. We'll see. No official confirmation. And now we have it. So another touchdown drive for Billy Edwards. And the Deacons add a score here in the third with the white squad. How about the tackle football? I mean, I, I think you could just see the intensity pick up. These guys are battling for spots, obviously, but once you start to tackle, everybody's antennas go up a little bit more. Starting to feel, it feels like real ball, Wes. 17 carries, 72 yards on the drive. 17 plays, 72 yards, and Edwards was six of seven for 43. Drive by Michael Edwards, or, or Billy Edwards, rather, and when we come back, Sam Hartman visits with Lawrence Sisler. We continue from Winston-Salem. Here on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. Michael Kern has now come back in as the quarterback for the Black Squad. Find themselves trailing 14 to 10 after Billy Edwards has guided the white team to a pair of scores. One in the second quarter and uh, one ending on the Aguebe touchdown run a moment ago. That time he missed Horatio Fields on the throw. See the 11 personnel situation here and now a little throw across the middle and there is the interception that ball got picked off by Kobe Davis and he has run out of bounds inside the five I believe As the interception is Kobe Davis. so they're going to mark it at the 14 yard line Heck of a play by Kobe Davis here. Boy, what a play by Davis. Had one interception a year ago and 13 tackles. Lawson administrates the spot of the football at the 14. <laughs> and we'll see if this is a quick change opportunity for uh, Billy Edwards. Would have been a 33 yard touchdown for Kobe Davis, who then turns it into a. Oh, hey, Lauren. Kobe Davis offering up kind of a little. Backflip. Oh, the backflip, my friends. <laughs> hey, you know what? If I had stretched out for like the last two hours, I, I might be able to show off a no, few no. backflips down here, but I don't think Workman's comp is going to take care of that if I get hurt, so I probably better lay low. Uh, so Kobe Davis's interception. And Coach's administration, they rule him out of bounds at the 14, even though he scored on the 33-yard pick six. Of course they do. 
So here's here's Billy Edwards to uh, to get this going. Edwards is kind of been that guy in the spring game, Roddy. And being down on the field, you kind of get a different view of how these guys interact. Yeah. Man, he's hyping his teammates up. He's down there like, guys, if you're tired, get a swing of water because we're going. Yeah. I like that leadership from a young player. Kind of a fiery guy, it looks like a little bit. He's got a little, he's got a little something to him. Yep. That's my old coach used to say. So here is uh, here is Edwards again going to work. Low snap, scoops that up. Rolls to the wide side and now will be touched up right around the 11 yard line. All right, so we saw the backflip by Davis. Lauren talked about stretching out. What is this? I might add. That's, Roddy. Uh, that, that's, that's dancing right there. Yeah. Is that what y'all are Get doing? Some young jock. It's going down. Meet me oh. in the mall. It's going down. Oh, oh my uh, God. That is uh, so good, y'all. Oh, Get my it. God. Get it. Get it. Oh, my heavens. Ro Roddy was, was feeling it today. You were feeling it, my man. Uh, we'll say that was supposed to be a safe space. I know there are cameras present. <laughs> hey, they're be. always rolling. Supposed Don't ever forget that. They're always place. rolling. Okay, that's why I have trust issues, man. <laughs> Oh my goodness, there's a throwing catch in the end zone and Des Williams hauls in another catching traffic this time for another Billy Edwards touchdown pass. 12 yard throw from Billy Edwards to Des Williams. It's a nice delivery by Edwards. Williams looks like he just gets inside leverage. We got by the defender Anthony Boriello. Able to snag the pass. Look, I, I think these backups have looked pretty good today. You know, right. Sam Hartman, we expected it. Yes, he looked good, but he always looks good. These backups have really done a nice job. Edwards 12 of 14, 126 at 2, Roddy. 12 of 14. It's hard to do that against air. Last Saturday in Chapel Hill, Tom Lugabell and I saw Jacoby Criswell go 6 for 6 for 105 and a score. Now, Here's the thing I want to add. Let's get a look at this. You talk about the ball coming out of his hand. He didn't even have a full window. And, and when you have a compact delivery like that, you often don't need it. You just need a little bit of space. The ball jumps out of his hand a little bit. So you know, I don't know where he's going to end up in terms of the competition going into the year. But if you're looking a few years down the line, Billy Edwards is showing you enough to say, all right, this kid's got something. 12 yard score there. Okay, now I'm going to bring the spring football conversation right here to the table. Okay. And you know what I mean by this. And this is the fans who are watching today or they're here at Truist Field and they see Billy Edwards and you know how this you know how this germinates among fan bases, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, it's like the guy who you know's on the team and then all of a sudden he flashes in a spring game or those old preseason basketball scrimmages. Love that. And you know what I mean, right? So Billy Edwards is behind one of the greatest quarterbacks, if not the greatest quarterback in Wake Forest history. He's got a season to tell us, maybe two if he chooses to use it, yeah. right? So where's Billy Edwards factor into this with Michael Kern, who has some experience, but Billy Edwards has looked pretty good today. And I'm not trying to upsell Billy Edwards. I'm trying to talk about Dave Clawson's roster management. Well, I, first off, I think you've got a log of quarterbacks that can move the ball down the field for you. We've seen Michael Kern, Mitch Griffith certainly capable, and obviously sure. Billy Edwards has done a nice job. And then I think a lot of it's gonna depend on what Sam Hartman decides to do. He's back for 22, he can come back for 23. If he decides to do that, then the nature of college football, guys graduate, they wanna play. Sure. So it'll all work itself out. David right. Lawson is gonna keep that room filled with players that may be projects in some respects, but can be very See, and look, here's the other thing about spring practice. You can walk out to any one of the 15 practices and you will come out of it with a different guy that's going to be the best player on the field next year. That particular day. Exactly, okay. because they have a great day. Some guys happen to have a great day on day 15 in the stadium. And yes, performing in the stadium does mean something, but it doesn't tell the full story. Yeah. So you got to calm yourself a little bit if you're a fan, right? You get to see one. And this is one everywhere. There are four schools today in the ACC yep. where somebody's going to come out of Coral Gables, Winston-Salem, Blacksburg, or Durham with that guy that they're going to be looking if for. If I watch this film only today, Horatio Fields is going to be an all-ACC performer next year. And he may very well be. But when we talked to, talked to Dave Clawson about it just a second ago, 
there's there are things that that every young player still has to develop. And on cue, Horatio Fields, ladies and gentlemen. All ACC. <laughs> Check out my All ACC ballot when it comes out. It's Horatio Fields going to be all over it. Write him in. Preseason. Preseason. In July, you mean to kick off? You're, he's your guy. Horatio Fields. With this league's wide receiver inventory, you're going to go that route. Horatio huh? Fields. <laughs> Best spring game of them all. In all seriousness, he has been, look, he has been as advertised in terms of top end. And if he continues to develop, he is in the mold of the guys that they have had that have been really good. But uh, you're going to have A.T. Perry, Donovan Green, and Taylor Morin, which is going to compete for the best receiving core in the entire ACC. Yeah. There's a break. Three quarters in the books. White team by 11 points. Last 10 minute quarter is next from Winston Saints. Now we go to the fourth period of play. Don't forget lacrosse on a Thursday night. It's a staple on ACC Network in the spring. Must see. It is a must see, Wes. Ben's game is Notre Dame hosting North Carolina at six. Never. And then to Chapel Hill for Jenny Levy and number one North Carolina, number seven Duke. Dana Boyle telling us yesterday on Packer and Durham, Duke is the team to keep an eye on as we move toward championships. And women's lacrosse, it's all here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Nick Regano, the catch, 11-yard grab, and Dylan Hazen has been shaken up on the play. And while they tend to Dylan, maybe we go downstairs here. Lauren Sistler with uh, number 10, Sam Hartman. All right, we got Sam Hartman here hanging out with us. Obviously, uh, a unique situation right now being on the field. In game action, kind of different for you. How, how does it feel to be back here behind the line of scrimmage, hanging out, observing things for the moment? Uh, I feel old would probably be the, the best word to describe it, but uh, it's very cool. It's cool to see you know, the young guys get work and, and guys that haven't played a lot of football, you know, get out there and showcase their talents, and um, you know, they get to enjoy this moment. We got a great, you know, crowd, the biggest crowd I've ever seen. And obviously, we haven't done this in two years, and. Um, you know, it's good to see the young quarterbacks get out there and throw it around and, and run the offense the way it's supposed to be run. So um, it, it feels a little weird, but I get used to it at one point, but not too used to it. That's right. We, 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 we like you. We like you playing in the game as well. So that's good. You talk about getting old. So you told me you're going to be 23 coming up right this summer. Uh, July 29th, I'll be 23. You know, I used to be the young guy on the interviews. Now I'm the old guy talking about whatever the has been. So um, but it's it's it's. It's good. It's good to have experience in this game. You know the amount of plays I've played. I think I, I think I hit like I think I'm in like the 2000s a little bit more. Like maybe maybe half, almost to 3000. Uh, so that's you know, a lot of plays. But um, you know every play is completely different. So it helps and then it doesn't. But um, you know it's good to always get out here. Any any work we can get with live. You know 11 on 11 is always good. Oh, that's a hold. Come on. There it is. Look at that. I should be a ref. Two flags. That's uh, Horatio, 25. He's a good, good freshman. He's going to be a good player for us. Um, enjoyed watching him this spring. He's really come along. Pass the quarterback, Mitch Griffiths, a VA native. Uh, he's having a good spring, too, as well. Talk about those personalities. Take me through some of the personalities you have at the receiver position in the tight ends. you got a lot of them floating around. Yeah, you know, we'll start with, you know, the, the man, the myth, number nine. <laughs> Uh, you know, A.T. Perry, he's, he's a legend around these parts. And I think the coolest thing about A.T. is he came in and honestly, I not to say I wrote him off, but, you know, he didn't, you know, his first two years when he was here with me really didn't, you know, stand out very much and took a while to kind of, um, you know, learn the playbook. But, you know, once he got it going and he got his shot, uh, really came along. And obviously last year, you know, record setting kind of year. And, uh, moved to Keyshawn, I would say, is the next probably big personality. You know, he didn't have any crazy big plays today, but you would have seen him throw some TikTok dances out there for us. Taylor Marin. Oh, snap. Yeah, exactly. Taylor Marin's, a, you know, a more quiet, reserved guy. Blake's got the hair, 85. I don't know if you guys have got a, a glimpse of that. We don't really know what that is, but, hey, he can, uh, he can pull it off. Um, you know, Jamal Banks, another reserved guy, but he can move around a little bit, and he's a great athlete and great player, great kid, too. Uh, and then the running backs, you know, we got Justice and um, Christian and then Cooley's in right now. And they're all just different individuals and very fun to be around. O-line's, you know, a lot of guys. Um, you know, it's a good group. It's a good core group and ones and twos. I mean, obviously the twos are, these are really the threes are out there right now. And I mean, they can all play and it's, it's, a, it's an honor to be, you know, part of this group and, you know, a great group of young men we've got. You
not not a not a good look for Whiteheart. So apparently that's what they're telling me up in the booth. Did he lose a bet or something? What's going on with the hair? I mean, he's got a. I think he's got a pretty steady relationship, and Coach Clausen always says, like as you can tell with my uh, facial hair here, this was a joke. This is not actually how I rock my facial hair. Um, it's kind of a spring game tradition. We kind of mess around. Like Taylor Wren's got the goatee. Jurgens has got like the, you know, like Colonel Sanders kind of thing going. Whatever that is. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, it's. I mean, he, he can pull it off. He's got. He, I think he's got a stable thing going, so it doesn't really, you know, won't be. Not worried about. Ooh, he would have got killed. Uh, <laughs> not really worried about losing anything there. So hey, if you want to do it, go for it. Hey, so while we're on fashion, we'll get back to football in a moment. So Roddy's a wants to know about this hat. First of all, you got the hair underneath. I don't know. What do you call that? Like the. Uh, we, it was kind of like the fullet, like the yeah, fade yeah, mullet fade kind of deal. I like it. I faded it a couple of days ago, so it might look a little bad, but you know, I get bored and you know, try things out. I don't want to see if I can cut my own hair. It's save some money and Wait, you cut you cut it yourself? Wait, will you take the hat off so everybody can see this? Great. Had the hat on, whatever, but I turn sideways for us. There you go. There, there you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, good. So I like it. It was uh it was one of those deals. Uh, I did it last year a little bit and it kind of turned into a uh, we called it a, a bullet, a bowl cut mullet, you know bowl cut up here and then the mullet back in the back but you know we just we let it fly here and uh you know it's kind of my last last chance to kind of have hair like this and look like this before i get in the real world so might as well you know do it while i can and um i don't know it keeps the guys loose and you know they look at me sometimes too serious or whatever so kind of they'll laugh at me when they look at All this right. so i'll tell you what That's lauren see if you can yeah, get rock sam. it while you got it right yeah. see see All if right. you can keep sam here real quick we're gonna take a All quick right. time sounds out good guys and we'll come right back uh sam hartman visiting with lauren sisler it's been fabulous on acc network we're uh about two and a half into the uh, fourth period 21 10. White team leads the black squad. Leo Kelly's going to get to rock, and Sam Hartman continues to visit with Lauren Sessler. Yeah, I mean, this is the Sam Hartman hour, right? We get in the fourth Absolutely. quarter here, and he is yes. just taking us through this thing because it's it's not all about football, y'all. There's got to be some of that chemistry in there. you got to rock what you got to rock, you know, with the hairdos and the Fu Manchus and the – I don't know. But we'll let Sam uh, kind of break things down for us. Let's get inside the helmet a little bit. When you talk about – Stepping up to the line of scrimmage for you as a quarterback. What does that checklist for you look like? Uh, I mean, you're first making sure everybody's set, everybody's in the right position, right? We're getting the call out, uh, making sure it's getting ID correctly. Uh, and then, you know, you're checking the defense out while you're doing that. It's kind of a multitask deal. Um, you know, you're looking where, you know, matchups, you know, depths, leverages. And then, you know, you're just really reacting post snap or pre snap, and then you're reacting to your post snap, you know, read, whatever. and. Um, like right there is a good handoff decision there. Leo Kelly, a veteran in the room, uh, sig part-time signaler as well. So, you know, he does it all. And, you know, you're, again, it's making sure everything's set and then you're just you're basically snapping the ball and figuring out if you're right or wrong and then reacting to that. So as we talk about progression, as you've, you know, you're about to enter up to age 23, you've had some time there under center. You've had some opportunities to grow. Where have you seen your greatest growth as a quarterback here at Wake Forest? Um, I think mentally just the next play mentality. You know, you miss a play, you make a bad read, you do whatever wrong. Uh, I think just being able to bounce back and, and play the next play, play the next series has been huge. And um, I mean, I think it helps the offense and it helps everything just kind of roll along. Got Brett Griffiths coming in. Um, Going to probably be a lot of handoffs. I don't know, maybe Brett might get the throw. He's a mid-year guy. It's actually Griffiths, if it sounds familiar, is Griffiths' little brother, so a little bloodline there. Um, but we'll see here if we get a pass. Hopefully Coach R lets him sling it around a little bit in his first real live ex experience. Um, but, yeah, no, it's definitely, I'd say, mentally is a, good, is, a big, is a big step, and it's a big step for all the quarterbacks, you know, playing the next play, playing the next drive. All so, right, Roddy, you got a question for me? Yeah, Sam, uh, I, I know that you're going to have to relay it, but how has he seen the program evolve over the course of his five years here? Yeah, so Sam, uh, Roddy up here says, how have you seen this program evolve over the course of your tenure here? I mean, it's been huge. I mean, you look in the crowd right now, I mean, I've, I've never seen this many people. I mean, that used to be a home crowd for us during an a, a ACC game. Um, I mean, you just see the fans have bought in. You know, it really starts with our AD, John Curry, has done a great job with fan engagement and really just putting football and sports in general as the number one priority in this, you know, in, in his mind and, and making Wake Forest not only a great academic but a great athletic school. And 
Uh, it's been an honor to be a part of it. Uh, first down, please. Thank you. And um, and I just think along with that is the culture that we built here, you know, through Coach Clawson. And, and really, he never strayed away from, you know, what we want to be and what we want to do here. You know, recruiting X, Y, Z, you can go through it, you know. We're gonna we're gonna do things by the book. We're gonna do them right, and we're gonna make sure they're completed. And um, and I think that that's a part of it as well. And then you look around on the sideline. Guys are getting excited for the young guys. You know, older guys are you know doing their job, doing it, being a part of it. And, um, and you'll see after when we finish up, it's all love on all across the ball. Even though it's a competition, we're you know we're all rooting for each other at the end of the day. And we know it's gonna be um, you know it's a long year, and, and a lot of guys are gonna have to step up and play. But um, you know when we get it rolling. It's it's all we're all one team. All right, so is there anything at stake here at who wins this game? I don't really think so. I think we're winning because I, I was I'm on the white team, so I'm pretty excited. I, I, <laughs> 21 10, right? 21 10. And I think we're I think we're driving right now. So it's I think it's going to be a blowout, I hope. But I just know that the Demon Deacons will win this game. So that's kind of, <laughs> if you guys want to pencil something in and, and, hey. and put that down, I think Wake will win this game if, if I have anything to say about that. All right, Lauren, can you ask Sam, does he realize how jealous Roddy is that the hat he's wearing is a one of one and not available for Roddy yeah. to take one home? Oh, look, Brett Griff is making it happen right there. Had a boy. That was good. That was good. All, right, all right, so Roddy's a little jealous because apparently you told us before the game that's a one of one hat right here, only one made. So like how we 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 can't get our hands on one of these. Roddy wants one real bad. I can see if I can pull some strings, but I mean this is a custom custom deal here. Saw an opportunity and took it. And I mean I might I might start a business or something and start selling them. But as of now, it's one of one. And I kind of like it that way. I might have to get like a like an all black one for home games and then the white for the away. Oh, we'll see. see. I wanted see? to try out the hat for the game. Never done it. I don't know. We'll see. I might go back, watch the tape, see how I look, and no. maybe change That's it. That's it. The tape there is going to go. say it looks great. You got You got to scout out the yeah. look, right? It like looks You good, don't just Sam. scout out what's going on. But and the guys say good. it looks good. It looks, looks good. stellar, outstanding. Yeah. Look, one thing I want to ask you specifically, we talked earlier this week, and you, there was no hesitation. You talk about not straying away from the program. Well, you didn't stray away. And you said legacy. That was the reason you decided to come back. Back with another opportunity here. So what does that mean to you and the significance of being part of this program and leaving a legacy here? Um, I mean, I think it means, you know, showing up every single day, working hard, uh, being myself, you know, enjoying it, um, sticking to the playbook, you know, being there for guys on and off the field. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's huge. I think, you know, everything that comes down to it is, is showing up every day and, and doing your job. And, um, you know, I've enjoyed every single moment here for whatever, five years now going in, you know, going into my last year. It's, it's surreal. Um, it goes by fast, but, you know, I wouldn't change anything that happened. And so, I mean, I think just really enjoying it and being who I am and being myself and it, it'll, it'll kind of take care of itself at the end of the day. Well, you've certainly risen up, Sam. It's been fun to watch your career. It'll be fun to watch you out here this season. Thank you so much for your time, your insight, your roasts. They were solid. you got to get those uh, out there. And, um, hey, we appreciate your time, and uh, best of luck to you this upcoming season. I appreciate it. As always, go Deeks. All right. Sam Howell. Lauren, thank you. Great job. Dave Clawson got to feel pretty good. A little penalty there is not going to make him happy. But, Roddy, Sam Howell had something for you. One of one. Not going to yep. be any more. Might, might alternate. Sam Hartman did you know he, he look if he gets the black if he gets the all black then maybe you know there's a little yeah you know, NIL's a thing he puts it out there limited release he lets me know first you know uh, yeah, we're a big Wake Forest household My wife Jackie played volleyball That's right so. yeah Jackie she'd get the first hat if one showed up yeah, there you go Brett Griff is trying to uh, maybe put something on the board Sam wanted him to sling it earlier and uh, the younger brother of uh, Mitch Griffiths getting some run. So well, Sam obviously and to no surprise voted as one of the captains by his teammates and it shows you know the experience that this team has because when you look at the captains they're all over the place the two linebackers Ryan Sminda and Chase Jones who we really haven't talked very much about also voted captains they've been fantastic. We will resume the Wake Forest spring game right after this. very matter of fact here today Roddy in my opinion this spring game has operated like the program does it is efficient yep it is on schedule mm -hmm. uh, and it is certainly productive we've seen a lot of players now and we I mean the back end of the roster yep. you can see where the competitive nature of this thing has 
stood out a little bit and I'll go back to Billy Edwards at quarterback. I will uh, I'm you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna pump up Horatio Fields off of yeah. this. Oh all ACC Horatio Fields. <laughs> okay. Spring game Wes it's time to overreact. Yeah. But but I mean we haven't even had time to get into the depth that this team has particularly on the on the defensive line. Right. And we've talked about a few guys highlighted a few guys but Rondo Bothroyd He's not playing today. He's one of the best defenders in the league at the end of last year. Kobe Turner, an excellent player from the University of Richmond, transferred over. We saw him against Virginia Tech last year. Yeah, good he player. caused the Hokies some issues at Richmond. He's going to be a really good rotational piece. You've obviously got Tyler Williams and Deion Bergen at tackle. So this defensive line is really going to roll well. We haven't had a chance to get into them as much, but uh, this team is really positioned well for 2022. To have a, a season a lot like they did a year ago. And Will Towns is trying to uh, add one here going to the locker room for the white team. And a timeout call by the head coach. This is where I like the head coach's discretion in spring games, too, Roddy. We could move the ball, we could have different per personnel, we could add a a floating timeout from time to time. Love the floating timeout. Yeah, yeah. The one that comes from thin air. Yep. It comes. You know, we can have penalties. We can have we, we can we can have punts and then no punts. Yeah, that's it, right? Love so the discretion. But I, I think I think it, it cannot be understated just how not only efficient this program is under Dave Clawson, but also how much the the community has rallied around. I mean, Lauren talked to John to John Curry about the investment in the program and yeah. with that comes expectations which is a big pre big reason why Brad Lambert uh, was brought in on that defensive side of the ball and if anybody can speak to systems at Wake Forest Brad Lambert would be the guy uh, Kobe Turner we got to see this guy last year and he was an issue and Russ Guzman had him at Richmond and now he's here at Wake Forest for a year and uh, tell you what he's going to be a factor in the ACC here is Towns again on third and goal trying to get to the stripe. Did he know he's going to be ruled short with 28 seconds left? Does Dave Clawson punch another spring game timeout? No, nope, we're going to let the clock roll maybe. We operate like this is end of game. You're trying to have the last play of the game right here, Wes. Here it is. One play for all the marbles. Well, score, not score. The marbles have already been gathered. Oh, no, 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 no. You play, you play like it's all the marbles. <laughs> oh. Snap on the ground and a flag with 13 seconds left. I think this is procedure on the white team. And look at Clawson. This is the All coaching starts. point, Roddy. Offense. This qualifies for a 10 second runoff. Oh, man. See? Now you get the 10 second runoff. All right. Three seconds are going to be left on the clock. Do you bang the floating timeout here? Do you try and get the snap off? What do you do? And do you let Brett Griffiths throw it in the end zone? Ten second runoff. Oh, he used the timeout to divert the ten second runoff. How about that, huh? Of course. So it is first and goal at the five. Clock is running. Snap to Griffiths. Got to make the throw for the end zone, and it is. Is that caught? Get to him, get to him. Xavier Simpson touchdown for the white team. <laughs> oh man, how about that? How about that? That's, a, that's what you call a walk off, Wes. Score doesn't matter. Game ends the last on play the play catch. The game. the game ends on the catch. Look at this. It is one heck of a catch. <laughs> Fade ball, back shoulder throw. Falling out of bounds, one-handed catch. Did he get a foot in? Uh, who knows? <laughs> 27 to 10. Here's Matthew Dennis to kick the point. 28 to 10. And a happy final. <laughs> They got the snag. Oh, yeah, he caught he it. He there. caught it. Oh, and did get the foot it. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the catch was, was definitely good. The foot in was unclear. I'm, I'm not, look, I'm going to say um, it is good enough for spring. Good enough for spring. It's well said. Nice moment for Xavier Simpson, though, huh? Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, 
the, the, these guys are aware that this is a this is a TV game. Yep. And it is a cool moment. All right. Lauren downstairs. And I think she's with Coach Clawson. All right, we're going to turn around. I, I'm, I'm facing the wrong way. We're, I guess we're, go, we're going with the field cam, right? Is that where we're at right here?